Thank you very much, Sue. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Isn't it great? My name is Thomas Astelbert. I'm uh, the founding director of the Population Wellbeing and Environment Research Lab, or what we know uh, locally as the Power Lab. Um, now, over a hundred years ago, a poet called Joyce Kilmer wrote, I doubt that I shall ever see a poem as lovely as a tree. Well, now, nowadays, of course, we don't just have poetry, but we have social media and the internet and smartphones and a whole heap of other things to take up our time. But still, I put to you that nature still finds a way to fascinate us like, like nothing else. The big idea I want to put forward tonight is that we can do a whole amount of good. We can do a whole lot in terms of promoting better health, well-being, and happiness among millions of people in Australia and around the world by conserving and restoring the green spaces, the parklands, the woodlands within our cities, especially the tree canopy. It's not just my big idea. This is an idea shared by many scientists around the world and also people who work in local councils and hospitals too, people who I work with in Western Sydney. Why do I mention Western Sydney, you may ask? Here's why. Now imagine that all 850 of us in the room, and plus all the folks who are watching at home too, were to get on a train. We were to get on the train in North Sydney Station. Before we get on that train, know this that the prevalence of type 2 diabetes in the area around North Sydney, 2.1%. Let's get on that train. We're going to head westwards. We're going to head over to Strathfield. In Strathfield, the prevalence of diabetes is over twice where we just came from. It's at least 5%, maybe a bit higher. But our train has not finished yet. The end of the line for us is in Blacktown. For in Blacktown, this is where I do a lot of my work with people who work in the hospitals and local councils. In Blacktown, the prevalence of type 2 diabetes is at least 7%, but maybe a lot higher. I like making maps. This is a map I do not like. This is an abomination, this health inequality that's occurring on our watch, especially as it's entirely preventable. Now, on our journey further out west, as diabetes got higher, another thing happened. Tree canopy got lower. Coincidence, you may ask? I don't think so. My research, others too, my research here in Wollongong and also in Sydney using data on hundreds of thousands of people has shown us this that those of us who live in areas where there's more green space, we tend to have better mental health, better general health, better sleep, better memory. We spend more time outdoors. We spend more time being physically active, going for a walk, going for a run. We have, we're more likely to be slimmer. We're less likely to be lonely. And we have a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease from parks. Isn't that great? And this is after taking into account things like increasing age and, and low income and differences in education and other factors. Well, you may wonder, why is this the case? Well, we find even more positive benefits where there's tree canopy. Now, everyone here has probably experienced a nice hot day in, in, in Wollongong. Maybe tucking under some tree canopy provides some nice shade, a nice pleasant walk outdoors perhaps, as you can see over here. Green spaces with lots of trees, plenty of space to walk outside and have a chat with friends, rub shoulders and make new friends too. Plus also, places where you can just relax, solo, take time out, recuperate, restore, stress out, de-stress, de take yourself out of the Twitterverse and the smartphones and all the rest of it. And then there's the other thing, which is green spaces can be places where entire communities come together, from walking the dogs just to having that regular daily natter in the afternoon when you get home from work. They can be places where we build nourishing, warm, long-term friendships and our social capital. And not just that. 
but in places where we can breathe a little bit more fresher air, we can escape the maddening crowd and we can escape the smog of the motorways and the streets too. All these benefits from green spaces. So, you may be asking, well, um, Thomas, but it takes a long time to do this, right? Of course, you are right. There's that old proverb, to grow one tree, or the best time to grow a tree is, was 20 years ago. But the second best time to grow a tree is today. And ladies and gentlemen, we have great news to report. Earlier this year, not one, but two of the Premier's priorities announced were specifically in this area to improve access to quality green space for everyone and to improve and restore tree canopy within our cities also. This is how it's looking so far. Over $300 million invested in this. Five million trees to be planted over the next 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be a game changer. This is really exciting. People are listening to the research that we're doing. It's very satisfying to see that our research is being consequential in our local communities. So my research going ahead is to say, these investments here, are they going to be keeping us healthy and out of hospital? And more than that, are they going to help us to minimize, narrow down, maybe just maybe even eliminate those health inequalities that I showed you earlier on the map? If this is of interest to you, contact us, let us know. If you are interested in collaborating with us, you want to come work with us in some capacity, you can use our results to drive change, then contact us, join us the more the merrier. We're going to have a lot of fun along the way. After all, as Hilaire Belloc once wrote, from quiet homes and first beginnings out to those far undiscovered ends, there's nothing worth the wear of winning but laughter and the love of friends. Thank you very much. <laughs>